Welcome to the Urinary System Lab where we will cover the basics of the human urinary system. The urinary system plays a major role in homeostasis. First, by eliminating waste. Nitrogenous waste in humans is mostly eliminated in the form of urea. Secondly, by regulating water and ion balance. Blood pressure is regulated by urine volume output. If the internal body monitoring system senses that the blood pressure is too low, the kidneys will respond by lowering the volume of urine output to maintain body fluids to aid in stabilizing blood pressure. Conversely, if blood pressure readings are too high, then the kidneys will increase the volume of urine to decrease blood volume to bring down blood pressure. Electrolytes are reabsorbed or secreted. Electrolytes such as sodium and potassium are reabsorbed and secreted respectively to aid in water balance. And thirdly, the kidneys play a role in regulating blood pH. Hydrogen ions are secreted if blood pH readings are too acidic and bicarbonate ions are reabsorbed if blood pH readings are too basic or alkaline. Remember blood pH has a narrow range between 7.35 and 7.45. We now will take a look at the major organs of the human urinary system. The urinary system is made up of two kidneys, two ureters, one urinary bladder, and one urethra. The female and male urinary systems are somewhat different from one another. First take a look at the female urinary bladder housed in the pelvic cavity. Sitting superior to the urinary bladder is the uterus. This explains the urgency for pregnant women to eliminate their urinary bladders as it fills with urine because as the uterus enlarges with fetal development, pressure is exerted on the urinary bladder. The male does not have a uterus superior to the urinary bladder, but found sitting inferior a prostate gland. The prostate gland in the male surrounds the urethra. Seen here is a sagittal plane of section of the female's pelvic cavity showing the uterus resting atop the urinary bladder and also see the urethra through which urine is eliminated. Seen here is a sagittal plane of section of the male's pelvic cavity showing the urinary bladder and the prostate gland that surrounds the urethra. As you noticed, the male's urethra is much longer as it extends the length of the penis, which is why men suffer far less urinary tract infections than women. A woman's urethra is a shorter route for bacteria to migrate up into the urinary bladder. Blood flows into the kidneys via the renal arteries that branch off the abdominal aorta. Once processed, the blood exits the kidney via renal veins which drain into the inferior vena cava. The fluid that has been collected from the blood processing is urine, and urine exits the kidney via the ureters. This model lets us look at the internal anatomy of the kidney. The region along the outer rim of the kidney is termed the renal cortex. The middle region of the kidney is the renal medulla. The triangular shaped structures are the renal pyramids. The tips of the pyramids are known as the papillae. The areas between the pyramids are the renal columns. Urine that is produced in the kidney drains out the renal papillae into a funnel shaped structure, a minor calyx. Each papilla is surrounded by a minor calyx. Several minor calyces will merge and form a major calyx. 
and major calyces merge into a central drainage point, the renal pelvis. Urine drains from the renal pelvis into the ureter. We take a close-up view of the kidney and study the structural and functional units of the kidney here, the nephron. Kidneys have over a million of these microscopic urine producing structures. The nephron is made up of two major parts, the renal corpuscle and the renal tubule. The renal corpuscle is comprised of the glomerulus, which is a knotty bed of capillaries, and secondly, the glomerular capsule, sometimes referred to as the Bowman's capsule. Blood enters the glomerulus by way of an afferent arterial and exits via the afferent arterial. The first step to urine processing, filtration, takes place here. The afferent arterial being somewhat larger in diameter than the efferent arterial allows more blood to flow into the glomerulus than can exit out the efferent arterial. Blood pressure builds up and anything in the blood small enough gets filtered out and is collected as filtrate by the glomerular capsule. This filtrate leaves the renal corpuscle and enters the first length of the renal tubule, the proximal convoluted tubule, to begin the next step of urine processing. The renal tubule is made up of the proximal convoluted tubule, which leads down into the nephron loop, sometimes referred to as the loop of Henle, and then along the length known as the distal convoluted tubule. Proximal and distal, these terms refer to the proximity to the renal corpuscle along the length of the tubule. It is along the renal tubule where the second and third steps of urine processing, reabsorption and secretion takes place. When the filtrate has made its way along the renal tubule, anything that remains in the tubule is urine, which drains into the collecting duct, which then drains down to the renal papilla to collect in a minor calyx. Here is another model of the nephron showing the renal arterial flow, which leads into the afferent arterial, into the glomerulus, and exiting, exiting out the efferent arterial. The efferent arterial leads into another blood network known as the peritubular capillaries which surround the renal tubules. The four steps to urine production are 1. Filtration which takes place at the glomerulus. The second step, reabsorption, takes place primarily along the proximal convoluted tubule and the nephron loop. Reabsorption takes materials back up from the filtrate and moves it back into the peritubulary capillaries so it will remain in the body. Things such as glucose and amino acids, and nutrients and some water may be reabsorbed here. Secretion, which takes place primarily along the distal convoluted tubule and the nephron loop. Secretion is a backup to filtration in that materials in the blood needing to be removed from the body, maybe such as hydrogen ions, are moved out of the peritubular capillary and then directed into the renal tubule. And finally, the fourth step, excretion of urine from the kidney into the collecting duct to make its way to being eliminated from the body.